Hello everyone, my name is Tyler, and this week I'll be talking about velocity over lifetime, and I'll give an introduction to particle system curves. So let's get started. Now for this week's tutorial, I've uh, manipulated a couple aspects of the default, default particle system so I can show you velocity over lifetime a little bit better. First off, I've changed the rotation to be zero um, for each axis. Um, when you create a particle system, it starts off with a negative 90 degree rotation in the x axis, and I wanted to um, basically nullify that out so you could see more clearly along which axis the particle is traveling along. I also changed the start speed to zero because it can interfere with the velocity over lifetime if you have a starting speed. I've also changed the size of the particle to 0.25 so we can see them a little bit more clearly when they're moving around. And I've also changed the shape of the emitter to basically a point emitter, which is um, a box with zero height, length, and uh, width. So yeah, let's get started with velocity over lifetime. So velocity over lifetime basically gives you a lot more precise control over how your particle is moving and in which axis it is moving. So if you wanted it to be moving at a speed of 5 along the x-axis, you can see right here that the x-axis is designated by this x arrow, and that the, move, the particle is moving at a speed of 5 along that axis. You can also have it um, have a negative velocity, and it will move the opposite direction of that axis. And then you can also have it uh, move at different axes at the same time. And then um, the particle will appear as if it's moving uh, as a mixture of those velocities. So one of the more interesting things that you can do with velocity over lifetime is instead of having a constant velocity over lifetime, you can have your velocity um, defined by a curve. So if you go to this little black arrow over here, and you select, instead of constant, you select curve, um, you'll see that um, curves for each axis of um, speed will show up. And then if we bring up this window, we'll be able to see that a little bit more clearly. So right now we have the z-axis selected for velocity, but if we move it to say all the way to 1, um, as you can see the particles will be moving at a velocity of 1 in the z-direction. So let's move some of the other ones. So as you can see right here, all three of these um, axes, or not, yeah, all three of these axes are on the particle system curve window at the same time. So if you want to select one of them, you can either just click on uh, the one that you want to move around, or you can double click um, the one here in this window. And if you want to um, hide one of the axes because you're only working with a certain axes, then you can just single click um, these and then they will hide them from the particle system window. They'll still have the velocities defined in these, um, but they won't um, show up in the window itself when you're editing. So let me reset those real quick. Um, so if you want to change um, the upper and lower bounds of um, how fast your particle is moving, you can just go into this window here and then put in a number and it'll change both the lower bound and the upper bound of how, uh, how fast your particle is moving. So if we drag that line to the top again, as you can see it's moving a lot faster than if it was at 1. So let's get on to the really interesting part of particle system curves, is, and that's keys. So to add a key to a particle system curve, you can just right click and say add key. And what this does is it gives you another point to manipulate um, the curve with. So if you wanted the particle to start off rather quickly and then kind of slow to a halt over the course of its lifetime, you can do that by adding another key and then just dragging it over to zero. So as you can see here, the particle is moving very quickly and then kind of slowing to a crawl and then stopping at this point right here. So that's pretty nifty. Um, you can do all sorts of crazy things with it, like have the particle basically reverse direction, which is a little difficult to see here. Um, but basically the particle is moving very quickly, slowing down, and then completely reversing direction all the way back to its origin. Um, so that's pretty handy if you want to go into more complicated effects um, where precise movement is required. So let's move on to some of the other things that you can do with this. Um, you can have it choose between, you can have it choose randomly between two velocities. So let's reset these real quick and have a velocity of 5. 
So as you can see here, at each point in the particle's lifetime, um, Unity is basically choosing, do we want a velocity uh, between 0 and 5? So as you can see, some of the particles are moving really slowly, and some of them are moving a little bit more quickly. Um, if you want to have, again, more precise control over that, you can do random between two curves. Now let's um, make these two disappear real quick. And as you can see here, um, Unity is choosing a random velocity between these two, and it's similar to what we had before. But we can make it a little bit more interesting because we have two curves now. So we can have them start off at a relatively random speed, but then have them all slow off, um, or speed up, I should say, at the end. If we wanted to have them slow down, we would put this down there, add another key, drag that all the way to the bottom, and then they'll slow down at the end of their lifetime, as you can see here. So let's do something a little bit more interesting um, and talk about presets a little bit. Now presets are um, basically curves that you've created before and want to save for later use. So um, let me load up one of them right here. Um, basically what I've done is I've created um, a randomly between two uh, randomly between two curves for velocity and I've had um, each curve basically kind of follow almost a sine wave or a cosine wave. So it'll go um, quite quickly, it'll slow down, then it'll go in the opposite direction, slow down, start slowing down again, and then start going in the um, opposite direction again. So this can create interesting effects if you put these um, as each of the axes, axes um, as each of the velocities axes. Um, and when you, you can do that pretty easily by right clicking um, this graph over here and just saying copy, then you can just paste them over there. And it gives you pretty crazy kind of like orbiting effects almost where the particles will basically move between either going outwards and then back inwards or inwards and then back outwards. So that's about it for this tutorial. I'll be going um, into a little bit more depth on particle system curves in the next video, but um, that's basically it. If you have any questions, let me know. If you want to see me, um, if you want me to show you how to do something in particular, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time.